Welcome everyone. My name is Rachel Zukowski. I work at the Prince George's County Memorial Library System. Thanks for joining our program today. We have the honor of talking with Mark Parisi, who is the author and illustrator of the series Marty Pants. He also will be coming out soon with a book called Truth About Fifth Grade. So I'd like to hand the presentation over to Mark and he will be talking with us about how to become an author and illustrator and also show us how to do some cartooning ourselves. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me, Rachel. And thanks for everyone who is joining. Um, as Rachel said, my name is Mark Parisi and I do a book series called Marty Pants, the first book right here is do not open. You do not have to follow those instructions. Second one is keep your paws off. And the latest one is how to defeat a wizard. Now I'm going to um, do a little PowerPoint presentation and then come back and draw. So if you have, if you want to draw along, you can grab uh, paper, pencils, uh, markers, whatever you like to draw on, you can draw on the walls. So I'm going to start the presentation um, now and just be a little patient here. And there we are. This is the first book, as you saw, Marty Pants, Do Not Open. And the sequel, Keep Your Paws Off and how to defeat a wizard. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the covers of these books because they're not born complete. There's kind of a lot of back and forth between me and the editor and the art department at HarperCollins. So um, this is actually not the first cover that I submitted for Marty Pants, How to Defeat a Wizard. Let, let me talk about um, what's involved. And, the first one that I submitted was this one, Diary of a Wimpy Marty. And for some reason, the editor didn't like it. The book company said, no, we can't use that one. It's a little bit too much like um, Jeff Kinney's book. And I said, no, it isn't, I don't see it. But they didn't like it. So I submitted my second idea for the cover of the book. And it was Dog Marty, How to Defeat a Wizard. But for some reason, they didn't like that either. They didn't like this cover. Um, they said it was a little bit too much like Dog Man. Again, I don't see it. So the third idea I had for the cover of Marty Pants, How to Defeat a Wizard is still my favorite idea for the cover. And I'm sorry, it didn't get chosen, but it's Captain Marty Pants. This one I still wish was the cover of the book, but I'm still happy with the cover that I have. And I'm, I'm not sure why they rejected this one at all. Now, as we're talking about the covers, I just wanna show a few more because um, the Marty Pants books have been translated into different languages. I think this one is Albanian, maybe, Marty Pants. This one is German. They changed his name to Big Max, don't know why. And instead of um, Do Not Open, they changed the title at the bottom in German. It says something like, excuse me while I save the world. This one is, I think, in Dutch, Slim Rick. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, called the book Hocus Pocus. This is another German um, book, and they call it, now they call him Ben Black. <laughs> Again, I don't know why. This one is in Korean, and I'm not sure what the name is, honestly. So if someone out there can tell me, I, I would love it. And this next book title or book cover is actually not a real book cover at all. Farty Pants. This one was sent to me by Dave Pilkey. When Marty Pants came out, he did a little kind of parody of Marty Pants. And I actually think that's pretty funny. So anyway, um, before I talk about the books, I want to talk a little bit about Off the Mark, which is a newspaper panel cartoon I've done since 1987. Who was alive out there in 1987? Is it just me? And anyway, um, it's a cartoon that I do daily and it can be about pretty much anything. So it can be about cats, 
can be about snakes or monsters or nails, whatever I decide to do that day. And the first off the mark cartoon ever published was this one. And then I heard a loud bang. And when I turned back, he was gone. Now with this cartoon, um, you can see what happened to his little friend right there. What I noticed with this cartoon, and I think this is something to remember if you, you know, you, you like to do cartoons, is we are used to reading, at least in this country and a lot of countries from left to right and down the page. So you start reading a page in a book on the top left and you end the bottom right. So when I set this up, I wanted the reader to start up here, read this, and then end up at the bottom right. And this is kind of the punchline right here. That's the last thing I want the reader to see. Now this next cartoon is about cats. I like cats. Ooh, I hate when I laugh and food comes out my nose. And you can see if you're a cat, what that food might be. Uh, this next cartoon. Um, oh, I wanna talk a little bit about parodies. And because when I was young, uh, one of the ways I learned to draw, I learned about drawing and cartooning and all of it was reading cartoons and copying cartoons. And one of my favorite cartoons, of course, was Peanuts, which has Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and there's Woodstock sitting on Snoopy's belly. You know, Snoopy always slept on the doghouse. And I would copy Snoopy and Charlie Brown, and I kind of learned tips on how to draw. So, and a lot of cartoonists, professional cartoonists start out that way. They kind of copy their favorite cartoonists and then come up with their own style. Now, um, because now I have my own cartoon, I like to parody other cartoons, which is kind of like having fun with existing characters. So the, in this next cartoon, I, um, since I was such a big fan of Snoopy, I parodied Snoopy. So this is kind of a sweet cartoon. Let me show you the parody I drew of Snoopy. This is Snoopy in the nursery, in the hospital looking at the new babies and you can tell which is his baby, right? The one that's on the doghouse. And the only reason you would get this cartoon is because you already know who Snoopy is. And you know that Snoopy sleeps in the doghouse. So this is kind of a sweet cartoon. This next cartoon, Fair Warning, is also a Snoopy parody, but it's not sweet. So Fair Warning. And also it didn't happen. I don't want any upset looking at the next cartoon because it's all pretend. Anyway, here's another Snoopy parody. Mmm, I just love stuffing myself with marshmallow peeps. Don't you, Woodstock? Woodstock. Now we know Woodstock is a little yellow bird, right? So what happened to Woodstock? Um, nothing, actually, because this is just pretend. Anyway, there's another cartoon. Um, I have queued up here, which is a parody, and it's Batman. And again, I think everyone knows who Batman is. And I think most people know that there's a bat signal up in the sky that calls Batman. So with that in mind, never mind the bat signal. He gets here quicker if I show pictures from last year's Christmas party. Now you can see that Batman is up here. There's a picture of Batman. I get to draw Batman in his underwear. So when they show that in the clouds, Batman gets there quicker because he's so embarrassed. He gets there as quick as he can. I also think everyone knows who SpongeBob is. So here's a SpongeBob parody I did. What? How did you think I washed the dishes? Now this is SpongeBob and he's a sponge. So why would he need a sponge to wash the dishes when he is a sponge, right? So. They're kind of horrified over here. And one thing somebody called me out on is I guess Squidward does not like Krabby Patties and I have a meeting at Krabby Patty, so I don't get everything right. And this next one is, is this Legos? Yes. I got you a car or a new kitchen or an airplane, you decide. So basically he just got her a bunch of Legos and she can make whatever she wants. She doesn't look too happy. Now, of course, Every cartoon I do is not a parody. Um, this next one is about shopping, which I think most of us have done one time or another. Gosh, I forgot my money. I'm such an idiot. That's right, you are. 
the customer is always right. And again, you can see how it's set up. So the reader starts up here in the top left, reads, and the punchline is in the bottom right. This next cartoon is, oh, oh, the next cartoon's bathroom humor. So if you don't like bathroom humor, here's your chance to turn away. Oh, I'm sorry, did I cut you at a bad time? And he literally caught him at a bad time. And this next cartoon, I guess, is bathroom humor, but you might look at the image and think you know what's going on, but just let me read the uh, caption, the, the word balloon, and don't jump to conclusions. Where are my lemon drops? Oh yeah, I put them in Ted's pocket. So the, this is Ted right here. And what happened to the lemon drops? They melted when he went in the pool and lemon drops are yellow. So he's surrounded by this yellow puddle, and, but they don't know that's lemon drops, do they? So this next cartoon is a relationship cartoon. Nope, it's a cat cartoon. Haunted house, enter, exit. So you can see, I think most people know when cats get startled, they get poofy. And this was a fun one to draw. And this one turned into a Halloween card, which hopefully you'll find X Halloween. This is the relationship cartoon I was talking about. I hope she likes the turtle sculpture. Look how happy she is. But does she think this is a turtle sculpture? No, you know what she thinks this is. It's by a garage right here. She thinks she's getting a car. So I don't think this is going to end well for him. So anyway, when I do the cartoons, I um, would normally go to a cafe or something. Of course, haven't been doing that lately. And I would bring my sketchbook and I would spend all day there and I would draw in the sketchbook and try to come up with ideas. And as you can see, I'm not very precious in the sketchbook about how the drawings come out. Very sketchy. As long as I can understand what's going on, that's good enough. So I will just kind of fill up pages with ideas. I'll try to think about what's going on in the world, or I'll try to think about nursery rhymes or technology or phrases or whatever, food. And um, with this one, I can tell it was around Halloween because you've got a mummy here and you've got Frankenstein here and you've got a werewolf and you've got a witch and some ghosts. So I was trying to come up with Halloween ideas. And so when I said that this was the first cartoon I had published, well, it was the first off the mark cartoon I had published. The first cartoon I ever had in the newspaper was when I was 11 years old. And it was in the Boston Herald American, which is called the Boston Herald now. And they had a contest. And what they did was they would put what they called a curly cue in the newspaper. And this is what they called a curly cue. It was just kind of some random drawing. And they would say, kids, what can you make out of this drawing? You know, make something out of it, send it in, and we'll publish. Uh, I think they published three of them each time. And of course, as a kid, I love to draw, still do. So I entered the contest. Um, I looked at this. Some people will say they see a swan or a Z or something. And I saw a foot. I see there's a foot right here. And this was a bent knee. So I did my drawing, stuffed it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, put it in the mailbox, never saw it again. Of course, it was before email. And then a couple of weeks later, I opened up the newspaper. And there was my drawing. My drawing was in the funny pages next to my heroes, next to Peanuts and Hagar the Horrible and BC and whatever cartoons were in there. And my name, Mark Parisi, age 11 from Gloucester, Massachusetts. And there's the drawing right there. There's the curly Q. And of course, with the knee bent like that, it, you know, it's the, I could see that the person would have to be running. So I made the person running. And then I needed a reason for that person to be running. So I had him being chased by a monster. But then I needed a reason for a monster to exist. So I made him a mad scientist. So anyway, I was so excited that I 
entered again. I could, I mean, can you imagine seeing your cartoon in a newspaper at that age? It was very, very exciting for me. So there was another curly Q contest. And this one is the shape of one of the states of the United States. And maybe some of you know, I'm not sure I would know if I didn't already know, but this is Louisiana. And they said, kids, what can you make out of Louisiana? And some people will say, oh, it looks like a boot or a train or a toilet. I saw a dog, so I did my dog drawing, stuffed it in the envelope, put a stamp on it, put it in the mailbox, never saw it again. Opened up the newspaper two weeks later, bang, again, two for two. I was feeling really good about myself, really excited. My name, my age, where I'm from. And there you can see, there's the shape of Louisiana right there. There's the dog. Of course, I had to put a, I had to put a cat in there too. And I, I think I pretty much draw flowers the same way at, to this day. And so I was, of course, very excited. And they had another curly cue contest. So I did my drawing, stuffed it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, put it in the mailbox, never saw it again, opened up the newspaper two weeks later, rejected. They didn't pick my cartoon this time. And me being a sensitive artist, I never submitted again. I said, nope, I don't like the rejection. Of course, I had a lot to learn. If you really want to be an artist create in the creative field, rejection is just part of it. And I don't know why it even bothered me because they just published my first two drawings. And there are a lot of reasons maybe they didn't publish my third. I mean, I think the most obvious reason is they wanted to give other kids a chance. And another reason could be they picked the winners at random. And another reason could be my drawing got lost in the mail. And there, I mean, there's just so many reasons. I don't even feel the need to list all the reasons. So now, Let's talk about the books a little bit. Dave, the editor at HarperCollins sent me an email and said, hey, have you ever, I like Off the Mark. Have you ever thought about doing a wimpy kid, big Nate, Timmy Failure style book? And I said, yes, yes, I have. And he said, well, send me some chapters. And so I started writing. I mean, I'd never written a book before. Uh, you could see that the type of cartoons I do are single panel, like one, frozen moment. So I sent him some chapters and he sent me some feedback. It was a learning process for me. So I sent him some more chapters and he sent me some more feedback. And this kind of went on for a while. And eventually, I think it took, it might've taken two years. I had my book and this is Marty, Marty Pants. Now, the things about Marty Pants, number one, Marty is an artist. And I know we have artists out there. Raise your hand. And number two, Marty loves his cat. And I know we have people out there who love their pets. Number three, Marty always thinks he's right. And I know we have people out there who always think they're right. And number four, his favorite thing to do is save the world. Now, this is Marty. He doesn't always wear underwear on his head but he always wears black because he read somewhere that artists wear black. This is Jerome, his pet cat. And because he wears black and he has a pet that sheds, maybe some of you have had this experience. His clothes always look like this. And Jerome is kind of an aggressive cat. Now this is Marty in his room. Jerome likes to sleep on his head. Maybe this is um, neater or messier than your room. Um, who am I to judge? But there's one thing in this book that Marty does not like to draw. The way these books are set up is Marty tells his story and he draws images. So he's kind of telling his story and drawing in the book, telling you what's happening. So he's the you know, narrator and he's the artist. So when he, as he draws in the book, this is the thing he doesn't like to draw. Does not like to draw a bicycle. And the reason that Marty in the book does not like to draw bicycles is 
Because I don't like to draw bicycles. Because I'm the I'm really the one who's drawing the book and I don't like to draw bicycles. So therefore Marty doesn't. So in the first book, this is Marty on his bike. He just draws himself on a pogo stick and says, this is me on my bike. But he doesn't do that anymore in the second book. In the second book, this is Marty on his bike. He just draws himself on a frog and says, this is me on my bike. But he doesn't do that anymore in the third book. In the third book, he draws himself on an eyeball and says, this is my bike. Bikes aren't fun to draw, but eyeballs are actually very fun to draw. And of course, there's a cast of characters. This is Rungrat. And he's kind of based on a kid I knew growing, growing up who would tell me things and they wouldn't be true. He would just kind of make them up on the spot. And I would think they were true until I kind of checked and found out he just made them up And because he sounded so confident. So Rungrat might say something like, spiders need to keep making new webs or it all builds up until their butts explode. Bam. That's the kind of thing Rungrat says. And there's also Parker. Parker is Marty's friend and confidant and therapist. So when Marty has something on his mind, has to get off his chest, he will visit Parker and tell her all about it. This is Simon. Simon is kind of Marty's enemy, frenemy, and he is considered the school artist, which really bothers Marty because Marty's a much better artist. And Simon, as you can tell, is not a very likable character. I think you can tell by the way I drew him. So let's make him dance. And Simon only draws one thing, and that is this. You might wonder who that is. Does it kind of look like SpongeBob SquarePants? And that's kind of what I was going for, but I didn't want to draw SpongeBob SquarePants in the book because if I drew him over and over, I could get sued. So I drew an enemy Bob trapezoid shorts. So instead of a um, sponge, he's an anemone. See an enemy, that's this part. And instead of wearing square pants, he wears trapezoid shorts. That shape is a trapezoid. So that's all Simon draws. And he's considered the school artist. Bothers Marty a lot. This is Salvador Ack. He's a bully. And I knew some bullies growing up. And it seemed like the majority of them were trying to grow a mustache, but couldn't quite do it. So they just have a little peach fuzz up there. So Marty calls him peach fuzz. This is... Marty's older sister, Erica. You can tell she might have some attitude. This is, uh, she likes to change the spelling of her name. Erica, Erica, Erica. This is Mr. McPhee. He's based on a teacher I had named Mr. McPhee. And I didn't really like Miss, Mr. McPhee and Marty isn't crazy about his either. This is Principal Cricklewood who's had it about up to here with Marty. She shows up in the second book. Uh, these are Marty's parents trying to figure out who ordered the pizza. Maybe you can guess. This is Officer Pickles. Now you might think that's a weird name, but believe it or not, growing up in Gloucester, there was a police officer named Officer Pickles. So when I needed a name for the uh, police officer, of course I was going to use that one. This is Granny Pants, Marty's grandmother. She shows up in the third book. And this is Jerome. Jerome is based on a cat that I had growing up named Jerome. And he was a little aggressive. Of course, the um, Jerome in the book is way more aggressive than Jerome. And this is Jerome on catnip. Notice I draw how differently I draw him on catnip. Jerome, Jerome on catnip. And I think most of you know what catnip is. It's an herb that grows that when cats smell it or eat it, it kind of makes them go cuckoo. And it, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in an aggressive way. You can tell catnip makes Jerome very happy. Now this is the real Jerome from when I was a kid. And he might look cute, but you try to pick him up and see what happens. Fair warning. And this is Jerome watching TV. I don't know if your pets watch TV and um, never mind how old that TV is. And this is Dewey. He shows up in the second book and he's based on a dog I had named Dewey. And this is the real Dewey. Isn't he adorable? Very cute dog. And if you think this is adorable, 
This is Dewey wrapped in a blanket. Isn't that adorable? Isn't that so cute? And if you think that's cute, this is Dewey peeing on a no dogs allowed sign. Now that is adorable. And of course, Dewey snuggling with Leo and Lugnut, very tolerant, sweet dog. So cute. And so because I use so many things from my uh, life, you can see that, uh, you know, Rune Grats based on a kid I knew and, you know, Peach Fuzz is kind of based on some bullies I knew. And there's Mr. McPhee, who's based on a teacher. And um, let's see, the Dewey and Jerome are based on pets that I had and I'm even forgetting. So of course people ask me, is Marty Pants supposed to be you? Is it supposed to be me? And sort of, I mean, based a little bit, which I think a lot of authors do. I mean, Marty wears glasses, I wear glasses. Uh, Marty has brunette hair and I think what isn't turning gray is still brunette on mine. Marty's an artist, right? Marty wears uh, black and is covered in cat fur. That's me right there. And even the names are spelled very similar, which was an accident actually, because the first name I had for Marty was Artie because he's an artist. So I was going, thinking of calling him Artie, but I thought that was a little too obvious, a little too on the nose. So just by putting an M in the front, it became Marty which I think is a very friendly name. I like it a lot. And also it has the word art in the middle. And once I had the name Marty, the last I wanted a last name that was kind of different, kind of funny. And once I had the name Marty, Pants kind of wrote itself because Marty Pants, Smarty Pants. And as it turned out, it looks a lot like my name. But if you think Marty is based on me, then you can be the judge wait for laughter. Okay. This is a real picture of me. And that's a that's my real hair, believe it or not. And it's not a wig. And when I found this picture originally, I was look, looking going through a shoebox trying to figure out what picture to use. And I found this picture. And my first reaction was nobody can see this picture. And then I thought about it and it was like, no, everyone has to see this picture. So Marty at the end of every book is convinced that he's saved the world. So before I do the drawing, let me just do a quick reading of the first chapter of um, Marty Pants, How to Defeat a Wizard. And this is how it starts. Do weird things keep happening to you or is it just me? Chapter zero, I'm about to do something really crazy. I don't want to, I have to. The end of civilization is about to go down. I have to warn everyone. I think I have the courage to do what must be done, but I certainly can't do this alone. It may already be too late. The earth is starting to shake. You know what? I should tell this story from the beginning when this whole mess started. It was a Tuesday. Chapter one, sorry, not sorry. Apologize to Simon. I can, th I can think of a few things I'd rather do than apologize to Simon. For instance, run naked through a cactus patch without sunscreen or even eat a raw porcupine without ketchup or maybe even Listen to my dad talk about old music without a pillow. When I first listened to physical graffiti, it was like, blah, 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 I'm boring Marty to death, blah, blah. Why don't I stop talking, blah. But Principal Cricklewood isn't impressed with any of these options. She insists I apologize to Simon. For what? All I did was call Simon a monkey washer. And I'm not even sure what it means. I just like the way it sounds. I tried to explain to Principal Cricklewood that being called a monkey washer could be a compliment. It means he's concerned with monkey hygiene. But something she said gave me the impression she wasn't buying it. I'm not buying it. 
It's not fair. Simon insults me all the time, but gets away with it because he's sneaky. He tricks people. Even my mom falls for it. You look ridiculous covered in cat hair. What was that? You look ravishing today, Miss Pants. Simon, you're so charming. A lot of people call Simon charming. Charming, charming, charming. I'm sick of hearing it. Just for kicks, I hop on my dad's computer and look up charming to see if there's any possible definition that could apply to Simon. Tap, tap, tap. Charming, delightful, pleasant, likable, adorable. Ugh, stop. Simon is so not charming. How has he tricked people into thinking he's charming? Hold on, there's a second definition. Charming, the act of using magic powers. Huh. And that's where I'll stop. That's the end of chapter one. Of course, Marty goes on to, in his mind, and maybe for real, who knows, save the world. That is um, how to defeat a wizard. And here's another sneak peek, Marty in a wedding dress, which shows up in the book. And he has a very good reason to wear a wedding dress. So now I will stop the presentation, come back in and um, start to draw some of the characters. So the first character that I will draw, maybe you can guess, be Marty. And when I draw Marty, I almost always, or maybe always, or almost always start with a circle. So you can draw along if you want, or you can watch or whatever. And the second thing I draw is not the other eye, it's the nose. And it's kind of a backward C that comes out there. And the reason I draw that next is because the second eye or lens goes behind the nose. And then I connect the two circles with a line like that. And with Marty's eyes, I don't put them in the middle of the circles. I kind of put them closer to the nose, closer to the center of the head. And they're just two dots like that. And I'll make his mouth a dot. So Marty, basically, his whole expression right there is just three dots, really. A couple short lines pointing up over the glasses like that. And for the sides of the face, going to start by uh, underneath this circle and kind of swoop down under the mouth. And then, oh, I forgot a step before I usually do that. I put the letter C over here like that. And then connect to that circle. And then from the bottom of this ear, letter C, I swoop down like that and leave the bottom open. Leave that chin area open. That's where I put the neck. And I'll close that up. And I'll put shoulders like that. And of course, Marty always wears black. And this is a nice marker, so it's filling in nicely. And Marty's always covered in cat hair. Now with Marty's hair, um, when I first started doing these books, I did not have to draw the same character over and over and over in Off the Mark. It was pretty much a different character all the time. When I started doing these books, it was the first time I had to draw characters over and over and over. And I found when I had done, um, when I'd come to the end of Marty Pants, Marty's hair looked different at the end of the book than it did at the beginning. So I kind of made a rule with Marty so that I could not have to redraw him all the time making that mistake. So I put a word in his hair. So with Marty, it just makes, me, it makes it easier for me to remember. It says M I N I, and that says mini. 
and then I put two other strands, mini two. So on, on Marty's head, it says mini two. And some people notice it, they've seen it in the front of the book and they say, why does it say mini in his hair? And I'll say, well, it makes him easier for me to remember how to draw him. And people seem disappointed in that. So in the third book, How to Defeat a Wizard, I made the mini two actually mean something in the book. So this is Marty. And I'm drawing from behind the pad of paper, which is very challenging actually. And always sign your work. When I was a kid, for some reason, I forgot to sign my work. So I like to give that advice, sign your work. So this is Marty. Now, Marty, strangely enough, is not my favorite character to draw. My favorite character to draw, maybe you can guess, is Jerome. So with Jerome, I start the same way. Circle. I don't know why I have circles. Circles are sometimes very challenging to get a good circle. And I have another circle touching it. And a line dividing them in half. And then the pupils kind of go in the center, but underneath, halfway underneath that line, like that. The nose is a little oval tucked in here and I will color in everything except the top. Kind of makes it look shiny. And I know I've had maybe a dozen cats in my lifetime and none of them have had big bushy eyebrows, big bushy black eyebrows, but Jerome does. And all I do is I just scribble on top of those circles, scribble, scribble. Who doesn't like to scribble? And for the top of Jerome's head, it's like the letter C that fell over backwards onto his head. Now his ears kind of, I'll go to the tip here, come down beside the eyes like this. And of course, those really don't look like ears. They kind of look like horns. And that was intentional because Jerome's kind of devilish and I want him to look, I wanted him to look the part. For the mouth, I will put an upside down T right there. Put the fangs like that. The fangs are almost like a smaller reflection of the uh, ear. Now for the face. Like that. And oh, he has whiskers, but they made the whiskers bent. And that's because he's kind of an aggressive cat. So he probably bent the whiskers in a fight. Maybe some dots in here. And I will put two ovals touching each other right here. Like two lines there, two lines there. And those are Jerome's front paws. He's resting his head on his paws. Now I'll draw his body and I'll start at the top of his head, in the middle, go behind the ear, and then swoop down. I hope I'm not drawing too fast for anyone who's uh, following along. And I gave Jerome a little stub tail. And it's like the letter C. Again, I guess there are a lot of C's in my characters here. And the reason I gave him a stub tail is because I had a cat named Bugsy. And he, instead of this big sweeping tail, he had this little stub tail and I thought it was adorable. And also Jerome's aggressive. So his backstory is he lost the tail in a fight. At least I think so. And for Jerome's back leg, again, letter C, big letter C and then go forward, down, straight across, then up for the tail. Two lines there and connect. Now this, if this looks at all familiar to you, I took that back leg from Snoopy. That's how Snoopy's back leg looks when he's sitting down. And so I stole Snoopy's leg 
So if you see Snoopy out there without a leg, you know who stole it. So this is Jerome, of course, named after my childhood cat, Jerome, and I'm going to sign my work. And now I'm going to draw Jerome on catnip because that is really my favorite way to draw Jerome is on catnip. And you can see there's, there are some similarities and some differences with Jerome on catnip. Now, sometimes I get the question, um, how long does it take to draw a book, to write a book? And I'd say the first one took almost two years. And it wasn't like I was working on it for two years. I kind of was doing it and then putting it away, thinking it was very hard, then coming back and then not knowing what I'm doing and coming back. And finally, just not giving up, but finally finishing it. And then once um, the second book was due, the contract said I had eight months to do it. So the second one took eight months. So same with the third. Now for Jerome, Jerome's eye. This is Jerome on catnip. His eye is a swirl. Already he's different. I'm going to draw another swirl here. This one I'm going to draw a little higher. Those are Jerome's eyes. His nose is the same though from the previous drawing. Uh, Oval colored in except for the top, so his nose looks shiny. No bushy eyebrows this time. The letter C that fell backwards on the top of his head. Kind of swoop down like that. Face like that. And upside down. T like that, I'll make the mouth a little bigger. The fangs. And I'll make the mouth a little bigger. Just a little bigger. That's just a little bigger, huh? And this is a pretty good marker, so I'll color it in. A lot of the drawing I do these days is on a tablet. So if I want to color something black, I can just fill it with black with one click. But there's something nice about using paper, pencil, ink on paper. There's Jerome's mouth. His whiskers straighten right out. Boom, boom. And for Jerome's paws or hands, come out right here, right next to the mouth. Couple lines that kind of start far apart and then get closer together. Three bumps, one, two, three. And then two lines, boop, boop. Same over here, one, two, three. And then Jerome's body kind of comes out round like that. And for his feet, one, two, three, then round at the bottom. One, two, three, round at the bottom. Connect. And I will add his little stub tail off to the side. Now this, now at the bottom here, a lot of times I like to add very short parallel diagonal lines, doot, 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 like that, in that acts as his shadow and shows that he's airborne. He's not even touching the ground. But one of the most effective things to show that he's on catnip are these little symbols. I'm not even sure what they are. I think they're bubbles. I've seen them in other drawings before, in other cartoons. And you can tell he's under the influence of catnip when you see those popping all around his head. And this is my favorite thing to draw from the book. If I'm signing someone's book, chances are I'm drawing Jerome and Jerome on catnip, of course, is 
the best way to draw Jerome. So this is Jerome on catnip. And one of the things I learned is catnip is a single word. I always thought it was two words. And sign your work. Now, some people ask me how long have I drawn? When have I start? When did I start drawing? And I think like a lot of you who like to draw, you just remember always drawing. I don't remember a time where I didn't like to draw. Like as soon as I could had control of a pencil, I wanted to draw things. So as far back as I can remember. So if you like to draw, keep it up. Keep it up. I think anyone can draw if they just practice. I mean, I think, you know, there'll be different levels, but if you practice, you can get good at it. I don't think it's restricted. I think it's something everyone can do. Now, this next character I'm going to draw is Runegrat, because just because he's my second favorite character to draw. Now, Runegrat starts exactly like Jerome. Circle, circle, like that. Line through the middle, pupils halfway under. And that's how I would start drawing Jerome, but that's where the similarities end. Rungrat's nose goes off like that, it's pointy. Short eyebrows, side of his head, I'll start above this eyebrow. Kind of go straight down, a skinny ear, straight down. Down the side, a skinny ear, straight down. Again, I hope I'm going at a good pace if you're drawing along. Now, I did a, um, a presentation and some uh, one of the kids mentioned that Runegrat was all about threes and I hadn't really thought about it before, but he was right. One, two, three pieces of hair, strands of hair, three freckles on each side of the nose, and one, two, three teeth. I gave him three teeth just because I thought it would be funny to show have three teeth. I mean, he's got more teeth in his mouth, but just three that show up. Right here, we've got a V and then of the around that one and color in the color in this one. For Rungrat's arms, I will put these short sleeves out here like this. I guess they're a little different. And the arms will be just the way I did Jerome's. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now I normally draw three fingers in the with the characters, um, just for simplicity's sake. But if a character has to hold something, then all of a sudden the thumb shows up. So this is Runegrat. I will draw his bottom of his shirt there. And now I will draw his pants and his pants are kind of like a train tunnel. Look at that, you could drive a train through there. And again, nice marker. Now I think when I when I draw, I I consider myself a writer almost more than an artist because one of the things that I enjoy most is drawing to be funny. If I was just an artist and it wasn't about being funny, I'm not sure how much I would enjoy it, but I really enjoy drawing to try to get across a funny idea. That's really a lot of the pleasure I get out of, out of art. And for his feet, ovals. And the final three for Ruingrat is three laces. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Ruingrat was a name that I came across in my 20s. 
Um, I read it and I go, oh, that's an interesting name. One day I'm going to use that name for something. And so I used it for a character in this book, Brungrat. And Brungrat says kind of crazy things like, here we go. Reading is good for your pancreas. And of course, Rungrat, sign your work. Nice. Now, I hope you're all drawing along. I would love to see what you've done. Maybe I could get some unpaid assistance. I don't know. So one thing I want to do right now, and um, the reason I do this is I, I don't know if you're aware of the bookstore in uh, Plainville, Massachusetts. Maybe not, but there is one and it's owned by Jeff Kinney who does the Wimpy Kid books. And he made his own bookstore, uh, which sells all kinds of books. And he has, um, he invites authors to come in. So I was able to speak there. And I was drawing Marty on the stage and a boy in the front row said, hey, can you draw Marty with your eyes closed? And I said, I don't know, I've never tried before. And I wanna do that for you now. And you might be surprised how good I can draw Marty with my eyes closed. I think, I think you're gonna be impressed. I think you're gonna be astounded. I think you're gonna be amazed. So what I could use from you is I can get your energy. Even if this is pre-recorded, I can feel your positive energy coming through to me through time right now. So what I'm asking is for your positive energy. And if you even, even if you feel yourself, feel yourself wanting to shout out positive things, like how great this is coming out, how superb it's coming out, how wonderful it's coming out. I would love to hear that. And it would actually help me achieve the perfect Marty drawing. So what I'm going to do now, and you have to trust that I'm not going to peek because if I was peeking, it would take all the fun out of it. So anyway, here I go. I'm going to start. Let me get my, get my marker in place. Okay. My eyes are officially closed. Now, when I draw Marty, first thing I start with is what? It's a circle. So there's a circle. So how's it coming out? Is it coming out great? It's coming out perfect, isn't it? This could be my best Marty ever. I have feeling, I can feel your energy. So then I draw his nose. I don't draw the other eye yet. I draw the nose. So there's the backwards C, that's Marty's nose. Yes, good, great, thank you. Now I, now I draw, now and only now do I draw the other eye, which is over there. So now you can see Marty starting to form. It's starting to look like Marty. And then I need the two eyeballs. So there's the eyeball right there and the eyeball right there. I like to keep it kind of closer to the nose, not so much inside the middle of the um, lens. And of course the mouth, which is down here. Now, again, tell me how great it's coming out. I can feel, I can feel your positive energy. I can feel you're really enjoying how he's looking. And the letter C over here is his ear. And then I have to connect the ear to the glasses. Oh, I actually forgot a line. I have to finish the glass, I have to collect, connect the two lenses to each other. So there we go. So is it is it great? Is it great? I just thank you. Thank you. I can feel your positivity. I'll do the side of his face down like this, then the neck, then I have to come down under the ear, over like that. And there's the neck. All right. This could be my best one yet. I can feel how I can feel how good. This is coming out. I can feel your positive energy, your, your encouragement. I can hear you screaming and shouting and say how wonderful it is. 
Now this is his shirt, color it black. And he's covered in cat fur. Now, oh, his eyebrows, I didn't do his eyebrows. All right, that kind of finishes the expression. You can kind of see, he's a curious kid. You can see the curious expression. And now I think I'm about done. Oh, the hair, forgot the hair. The hair is mini, M, I, N, I, and then two lines, mini two. So I think, I think, I can't wait to look. I think this is a good Marty. I think this is a really good Marty. And of course, I'll just write Marty over here to finish up. And I will sign my work. So I'm very proud of this one. I haven't even peeked yet. But I can tell, I can tell by the energy that's coming off. That is perfect. So now I think I'm done and I'm going to Finally look and see how he came out. Oh, I'm sorry if some of that was off screen. Of course, my eye was, eyes were closed, but um, all right, all right. That's, that, that, isn't that, per that is, that, I would hang that over my couch, wouldn't you? That's a good Marty. It might be, it might be Marty on catnip. That's Marty. After he wakes up in the morning, a rough day. Um, <laughs> well, I have to appreciate all the positive energy that came in from you during that, that helped me create such a masterpiece. It was really fun. So um, I wanna thank you all for joining me today. I really enjoyed myself. The, um, you can get these books at your library or you can get them online or wherever you want to get them. And so um, again, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Mark. I know you couldn't hear me the whole time. Can you hear me okay, Mark? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I know that you couldn't hear me while you were drawing, but I was giggling so much. I was like, <laughs> no, you are doing it wrong. It's not how Mark looks. So I wanted to show you all how uh, my Marty's uh, oh, yes. characters. Oh, yes. Can't wait. I can't wait. It's one of my this favorite parts. This is my Marty. Oh, nice. And then here's my Jerome, oh, that's not on catnip. <laughs> <laughs> and on the back, I did. Oh, I love it. On catnip. And See, what a difference. I didn't know you were an artist, too. Uh, well, you really made it easy. <laughs> I'm not an artist. <laughs> and then here's my rune grat. It's his ridiculous saying that reading is good for you. <laughs> yes. Why well, you even wrote that part down? Well, we know that reading is good for you, and you know your pancreas can't get hurt in, with reading. So. I think what's good for your mind just goes through your body and makes you healthy in every way, and that's. What Rune Grad thinks for sure. Agreed. So I hope everyone had a fun time and and drew some fun characters. If you'd like to check out Marty Pants series, you can find it at pgcmls.info. And we hope to see you all soon. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.